Now he went to meet one of the world's most remote tribes in the Indian Ocean, seeking adventure and apparently also to preach Christianity. But it's a journey that ended in tragedy for the 27-year-old American John Allen Chow. Exploring the world is often filled with awe-inspiring tales of fascinating destinations that beckon us to add them to our must-visit list. However, amidst the excitement, there exists a realm of places that are off-limits for various reasons, be it due to extreme danger, extraordinary safety measures, or their unique and sensitive nature. There's really nothing like North Brother Island in New York City. It's a secret hiding in plain sight. It's an uninhabited island of ruins in New York City, the, the last thing that you would expect to see. Even the most seasoned travelers are restricted from entering these forbidden locations. Join us as we explore 15 places that remain inaccessible to the public. Number 15, Snake Island, Brazil. Situated approximately 93 miles off the coast of downtown Sao Paulo, Snake Island has retained its untouched allure for a compelling reason. So being told I was going to a tiny speck of land off Brazil, inhabited by thousands of the most venomous vipers in the world, had me a little freaked out. Researchers reveal a staggering density of one to five snakes per square meter, making it an astonishing habitat for these reptiles. The island is home to a distinct species of pit viper known as the golden lancehead, contributing to a startling statistic. 90% of snake bite fatalities in Brazil can be attributed to snakes within the lancehead genus. This makes it one of the top 15 forbidden places you're not allowed to visit. These golden lanceheads wield a potent and swiftly acting venom that can cause the surrounding flesh to deteriorate. With lengths exceeding half a meter, these snakes find a unique haven on Snake Island, which serves as a resting place for migrating seabirds. The need for these venomous reptiles to quickly immobilize and consume seabirds before they take flight has led to the evolution of their formidable venom. The Brazilian Navy, recognizing the lethal threat posed by the golden lanceheads, has explicitly prohibited any unauthorized access to the island. Exceptions are made for select scientific groups, highlighting the island's restricted nature. Local tales in the coastal settlements surrounding the area underscore the perilous nature of Snake Island. In one account, an unwitting fisherman ventured onto the island in pursuit of bananas, only to succumb to a fatal snake bite. Another tragic incident involves a lighthouse keeper and his family who faced a snake attack within their residence, culminating in a desperate attempt to escape on their boat, yet succumbing to overhead snake bites. These narratives vividly emphasize the inherent danger associated with Snake Island, justifying its status as a forbidden destination. Number 14. Diego Garcia Nestled amidst the azure waters, pristine sandy beaches, and lush tropical jungles, Diego Garcia presents a picturesque panorama that most individuals will never have the opportunity to witness firsthand. Positioned strategically between East Africa, the Middle East, and Southern Asia within the British Overseas Territories, this island holds an elusive charm due to stringent entry restrictions, stemming from its crucial role as a strategic asset for both the U.S. Navy and the U.K. military. Diego Garcia's captivating landscape belies a tumultuous history, particularly during the Cold War from 1968 to 1973. In a controversial move, the island's original inhabitants were forcibly displaced, compelled to resettle in locations such as Mauritius, Seychelles, and other British territories. The island, then rented to the United States, witnessed around 2,000 locals losing their homes, a displacement that persists to this day as they remain denied access to their homeland. The veil of secrecy surrounding Diego Garcia extends beyond its historical injustices. Speculation abounds regarding the island's role as the purported site of some of the CIA's most significant floating black sites. However, this claim merely scratches the surface of the mysteries shrouding the island. The clandestine activities and covert operations generate a fertile ground for conspiracy theorists, spinning intricate narratives that leave us all in perpetual speculation. Sadly, the true nature of the island's activities may forever remain obscured, reinforcing the notion that some secrets are destined to remain elusive. Number 13. North Sentinel Island. Exploring a new destination can be intimidating. 
particularly when faced with unfamiliar cultures. However, in the case of North Sentinel Island in India, not only is travel prohibited, but it can also be perilous. This island, part of the Andaman Islands in the Bay of Bengal, is home to the Sentinelese people, an indigenous tribe that has adamantly rejected contact with the outside world for as long as anyone can remember. South Sentinel Island is also part of this archipelago. The Sentinelese people, living on North Sentinel Island, go beyond merely declining interaction. They actively repel outsiders by firing bows, making any attempted approach hazardous. Remaining one of the few groups untouched by modern society, their isolation is so significant that the Andaman and Nicobar Island Protection of Aboriginal Tribes Act of 1956 strictly prohibits anyone from coming within five nautical miles of the island. The dangers associated with a visit extend beyond the risk of violence from the tribe. The Sentinelese people are not immune to external diseases, making any contact with outsiders a potential threat to their well-being. The Indian Navy patrols the area to enforce these regulations, but instances of individuals defying the ban persist. While Indian authorities do not prosecute the Sentinelese for acts of violence, they also aim to avoid giving them reasons for confrontation. An unfortunate incident involving an American adventurer named John Chow illustrates the risks involved. Seeking to bring Christianity to the isolated group, Chow paid fishermen to transport him to the island with a kayak, accompanied by food and a football. His attempt ended tragically as he was met with bows and arrows, resulting in his demise. Seven fishermen were subsequently arrested for assisting the 26-year-old missionary in reaching the Forbidden Island. Number 12. North Brother Island, USA To make repeated trips to North Brother Island starting in 2008, the story became Payne's book of photographs, North Brother Island, the last unknown place in New York City. Nestled within the bustling metropolis of New York City, North Brother Island stands as one of the most renowned forbidden locations in the United States. In a bygone era, this island housed Riverside Hospital, a facility designated for those afflicted with quarantinable diseases, shielding them from the public eye. Amidst the multitude of patients who sought refuge on its shores, one figure emerged from the shadows, Mary Mallon, also known as Typhoid Mary. Mary Mallon, an Irish immigrant, arrived in New York City in 1883 and embarked on a career as a cook for affluent families. Yet, wherever Mary ventured, a trail of trouble followed. Typhoid fever plagued the households she joined, prompting the health department to uncover a disturbing pattern linking multiple cases to Mary's culinary skills. Despite vehemently denying any involvement in the disease's spread, evidence revealed that she unwittingly infected at least 53 people, resulting in the tragic demise of three individuals. Mary's insistence on her innocence collided with overwhelming evidence, leading to her apprehension and subsequent confinement to Riverside Hospital. There, a startling revelation unfolded. Mary Mallon was the first documented healthy carrier of typhoid fever. Confessing to rarely washing her hands, she believed the cooking process would eliminate harmful bacteria. The press seized upon Mary's tail, casting her as the face of typhoid disease. Locked away on North Brother Island, she spent over two decades maintaining her innocence until her life's unfortunate conclusion, a stroke induced by pneumonia within the confines of the island. In the years that ensued, North Brother Island transformed into a rehabilitation center for drug addicts, aspiring to provide hope and healing. However, corruption infiltrated the institution, leading to its closure in 1964. Since then, the island has languished in abandonment, its dilapidated structures serving as poignant reminders of its storied past. Now a haven for birds, it offers a serene refuge amidst the city's chaos. Yet, Murmurs of change linger as proposals to reopen North Brother Island to the public surface, igniting debates about its future. The outcome remains uncertain, leaving the island suspended in a delicate balance between its historical significance and the potential for a new chapter. Number 11, Dulcie Base, USA. Now I'm gonna tell you something a little bit different about the alien species. The bad news ones, there are nine races of alien populations 
If you're a fan of the X-Files and enjoy believing in mysterious stories, then hold on tight for the curious case of Dulcie Base in the United States. Back in 1979, a guy named Paul Benowitz from Albuquerque claimed he was picking up messages from UFOs near the city. He then said he found a secret underground place close to Dulcie, New Mexico, where gray aliens and humans were hanging out. This story spread like wildfire, especially in the UFO community. A tabloid ran a story with the headline UFO Base Found in New Mexico, making things even more interesting. Supposedly, this secret underground base, hidden in the mountains of northern New Mexico, was used for experiments with humans and aliens. Some people think there might be some truth to the idea of an underground base, especially considering the many missile installations during the Cold War. Then enters Philip Schneider, who said he worked on deep underground military bases. He claimed that during a repair job, he stumbled upon gray aliens and got into a big fight, with him being one of the few survivors. After, after the great firefight, the alien-human war, I am the only living survivor talking about it worldwide at all. Schneider spent the rest of his life telling this story. But in 1996, he was found dead with a catheter around his neck, raising suspicions of foul play. He had previously said that if anything happened to him, it might be murder. So, as you dig into the story of Dulcie Base, you're left to decide for yourself what to believe about this mysterious and forbidden place hidden in the mountains of New Mexico. Number 10. Doomsday Vault in Norway Imagine a hidden vault tucked away in a remote mountainside, not filled with weapons or fuel, but with something equally crucial, seeds. Just look at the landscape around us and how remote this is. And then jutting out of the side of this Arctic mountain is the Svalbard Global Seed Vault. This inconspicuous storage facility, known as the Global Seed Vault in Spitsbergen, lies peacefully above the Arctic Circle between the North Pole and Norway. Housing millions of seeds from countries worldwide, it boasts an impressive collection of 9,300 seed types for various food crops. While the idea of safeguarding nearly a million types of food might evoke thoughts of zombie apocalypses, the primary purpose is more grounded. The vault exists to shield against gene destruction and the potential loss of genetic material for diverse food crops. With a rich history spanning 13,000 years, this vault, situated in a neutral part of the world, emerges as a safeguard against political challenges and war. Protected by a formidable steel door, the location was strategically chosen to be far removed from geopolitical tensions. Its openness to contributions from all countries, without fear of destruction by others, underscores its crucial role in preserving genetic diversity. In essence, the Global Seed Vault serves as a future-proofing measure against the potential loss of vital crops. This significant purpose is precisely why visiting the vault is forbidden, ensuring its protection and resilience against unforeseen challenges. Number 9. The Coca-Cola Secret Formula Vault Atlanta In the realm of trade secrets and intellectual property, few examples are as iconic as the formula that propelled Issa Griggs Candler to immense success in 1888. Candler's acquisition of the Coca-Cola brand and its closely guarded formula from pharmacist John Stith Pemberton marked the inception of what has since burgeoned into the largest beverage company on a global scale. The sanctity of the Coca-Cola formula is upheld with the utmost care. Safely ensconced within a prominent display in Atlanta's World of Coca-Cola Museum is the original written recipe, stored in a secure safe. The formula for Coca-Cola may be the most closely guarded secret in the history of American commerce. Revered as the most closely guarded and meticulously preserved secret, the Coca-Cola formula encapsulates over 130 years of history, encapsulating special moments, cherished memories, and the enduring allure linked to the Coca-Cola brand. Now, a unique opportunity awaits visitors to the world of Coca-Cola Museum, allowing them to delve deeper into the famed secret formula. An immersive and multimedia journey guides guests toward the chamber of the secret formula, providing unprecedented proximity to the iconic recipe. This exhibition serves as a comprehensive exploration of the formula's origins, shedding light on the genesis of the secret concoction that has become a cornerstone of global beverage culture. Other companies tried to copy Coca-Cola's success, 
making it challenging for the company. People who take care of Coca-Cola worked really hard to keep the secret recipe safe. This made sure that no one from rival companies could steal the special formula. The secret around the formula not only stopped other companies from spying on Coca-Cola, but also created many interesting stories and beliefs, making the brand even more mysterious and fascinating. Number 8. Lascaux Caves, France The mystery surrounding the Lascaux Caves traces back to September 1940, when an 18-year-old boy and his dog embarked on a stroll near the town of Montignac. Suddenly, the dog vanished into a mysterious hole that seemingly appeared out of nowhere. Concerned for his furry friend, the young man swiftly gathered a group of friends to aid in the rescue. Little did they anticipate that this unexpected incident would unveil a treasure trove of wonders. Armed with torches, the group cautiously entered the cave, initially suspecting it to be a hidden passage to a nearby manor. However, as their eyes adjusted to the dim light, they were greeted with astonishment. The accidental discovery led them to the renowned Lascaux Caves, a sprawling labyrinth of chambers covering approximately 75 acres. Inside, the walls were adorned with an ancient gallery of over 600 mesmerizing paintings, majestic depictions of incredible creatures, local plants, and intriguing symbols danced across the rocky surfaces. It was like stepping into a portal to an ancient world, with some artwork dating back over 177 years. Word of this extraordinary find spread rapidly, and in 1948, the caves were opened to the public. However, the influx of visitors posed unforeseen challenges. The constant foot traffic led to a rise in carbon dioxide levels, increased heat and humidity, and the introduction of harmful pollutants, casting a shadow of deterioration over the delicate artwork. Consequently, the decision was made to close the caves in 1963 and they remain off-limits to the general public. Only authorized researchers are granted access to this sacred place. To preserve the beauty of the paintings without causing further harm, several replicas of the caves have been created for visitors to explore. Additionally, a virtual reality version of the caves has been developed, allowing people to admire the artwork, while ensuring the original caves remain protected from the detrimental effects of human presence. Number 7. Area 51, Southern Nevada, USA Area 51 stands as one of the most enduring urban legends and is undeniably the world's most renowned restricted location. Officially known as Homie Airport or Green Lake, this military base is perpetually shrouded in conspiracy theories, making it a focal point of global curiosity. The surrounding area is not only off-limits to civilians, but also to most military personnel, this summer invited people to storm Area 51 on September 20th. Since Thursday, five people have been arrested, mostly for... With nearby pilots risking disciplinary action for even flying too close to the base. The allure of this ultra-secretive facility has sparked numerous conspiracy theories. Some assert that evidence of alien existence is hidden within Area 51, while others claim bizarre experiments are conducted on the premises. Officially, however, all available documents maintain that Area 51 serves as a testing ground for weapons and aircraft. The exact nature of the activities within remains uncertain, fueling speculation. In 2019, the collective curiosity surrounding Area 51 reached a peak, drawing over 2 million people attempting to gain access to the base. Despite their efforts, no one successfully breached the facility for investigation. Instead, at least seven individuals were arrested for attempting to enter this forbidden and highly secretive location. The mystery and intrigue surrounding Area 51 persist, leaving the public to speculate about the clandestine activities transpiring within its enigmatic confines. Number 6. Vatican Secret Archives The Vatican Secret Archives are often surrounded by misconceptions, with popular beliefs suggesting that the Pope conceals evidence of aliens, demons, and other sensational mysteries in the catacombs. However, the reality is less sensational, though the contents are nonetheless heavily protected. Within the archives, you won't find evidence of extraterrestrial life, but rather a collection of documents, letters, and communications spanning four centuries between popes and various correspondents. Until 1881, all records within the Vatican secret archives were kept confidential. 
not because they contained scandalous revelations, but because exchanges between popes and kings in the 17th century were deemed information that the general public did not need to know. In 1881, Pope Leo VIII made the decision to allow researchers access to some of these documents. With approximately 50 miles of shelving holding records dating back to the 8th century, it's practically impossible for researchers to view them all. Access to the Vatican secret archives is heavily regulated. Only scholars are granted entry. Students, amateur historians, and journalists are not permitted. Those seeking access must have valid credentials for at least six months and are limited to requesting specific documents, with a cap of three per day. If the requested materials are not in the section you've asked for, tough luck. Access to the archives is guided by Swiss guards, and while computers are allowed, taking photos is strictly prohibited. To study the contents of these famous archives is a demanding task and very few individuals have been granted the privilege. Now it's time for our subscribers pick on the top 15 forbidden places you're not allowed to visit. It's none other than Nihau Island in the United States. This mysterious island is located southwest of Kauai in Hawaii, and most people can't go there. It's a pretty place with wetlands and you can't find any fancy resorts there. The only way to see it is from a distance, maybe on a short helicopter ride. Not everyone can go to this island because of a special agreement. Only specific people with permission, like the Robinson family who bought it for $10,000 in 1864, can visit. The Robinsons are picky about who they let in. The island has a close-knit community with family, relatives, U.S. military folks, government officials, and some invited guests. Even though it's kind of cut off from the rest, the island has a long relationship with the U.S. military. There's a small place used sometimes for special training. The island's main way of making money is through farming, and about 200 people live there, not paying rent. They use solar power for electricity, and their transportation is done by horses. So, what are your thoughts about Nihau Island? Do you believe it might be reopened to the public in the future? Share your opinions in the comments below. Number 5. The Buzludza Monument On Mount Buzludza, where a battle between the Ottoman Empire and Bulgarian rebels happened in 1868, there's a building that's quite special and mesmerizing. It's called the Buzludza Monument and used to be the headquarters of the Bulgarian Communist Party. Even though it was meant for official use, it looks more like a UFO, earning it the nickname Bulgaria's UFO. This makes it a popular spot for urban explorers. Located on a bare hill surrounded by forests and mountains, the monument was constructed in 1981. Its purpose was to serve as both the headquarters for the Bulgarian Communist Party and a monument to historical events. However, when the Soviet Union collapsed in 1989, the monument was abandoned and left to deteriorate. Over time, it became unsafe due to vandalism and neglect, leading to its forbidden status. While you can visit and see it from the outside, security guards prevent entry, and the inside is blocked with stones, welding, and metal plates. This unique monument remains permanently closed, and only time will tell if it will be torn down or restored to its original form, possibly becoming a museum and memorial to past events. Number 4. Paveglia, Italy Italy has numerous beautiful places to explore for a European holiday, but Paveglia isn't one of them. It's so undesirable as a vacation destination that the Italian Tourism Board strictly prohibits it. Approval to visit this island requires a lengthy application process, making it a challenging place to set foot on. But why is it forbidden? Paveglia is a secluded island situated between Lido and Venice. During the time of the bubonic plague, the Romans used the island to isolate the sick and protect the healthy people on the main island. After the infected individuals passed away, they were buried in mass graves in Paveglia. It is believed that over 100,000 people were cremated and buried there. Even after the plague, Paveglia continued to have a dark history. In the 1920s, a mental hospital was established on the island, housing people with both physical and mental illnesses. The island was also associated with a doctor who conducted horrifying experiments. Supposedly, he fell off the bell tower or was pushed to his death, surrounded by an unusual mist, which some believe is a sign that Pavelio is haunted. 
Ghost Adventures visited the island to film a documentary and reported various strange and spooky abnormalities. Even locals in Italy tend to avoid this island, so it's advisable for tourists to do the same. Pavalia's haunting history and restrictions make it a destination best left unexplored. Number 3. Club 33. Disneyland. Club 33 at Disneyland emerged a year after the passing of Walt Disney, the founder of the company. It stands as a symbolic representation of the divide between the privileged few, often referred to as the 1%, and regular park guests. This exclusive dining experience is members only, making it financially out of reach for all but the wealthiest individuals. Numerous tales surround the origin of the restaurant's name. Some suggest it honors the original 33 investors in Disneyland whom Walt Disney would entertain in the restaurant. Others propose that the name signifies the number of yay votes required for club proceedings after Walt's death. Another theory suggests that 33 sideways resembles M.M., representing Mickey Mouse. While these stories may contain some truth, the official reason traces back to the restaurant's address. Club 33 serves alcohol, necessitating a separate liquor license from Disneyland. To obtain this license, it needed a distinct address. Thus, it took the name of its address, 33 Royal Street, a well-known location among Disney enthusiasts. Access to the club is granted only through membership, which comes with a steep cost, $25,000 for initiation and an additional $10,000 annually. Number 2. Bohemian Grove, California This island and its exclusive members-only club served as a regular meeting place for journalists, artists, and musicians in 1872. Early members, including Ambrose Bierce, Mark Twain, and Jack London, freely roamed its halls. However, the dynamics shifted when local businessmen and entrepreneurs were granted admission. The club still operates today at its original location at Post & Taylor, solidifying its status as one of the most exclusive men's clubs or secret societies in the United States. The club's standards are so high that honorary membership is extended to only a few U.S. presidents, typically offered before their inauguration, and a select group of international business leaders and policymakers. However, conspiracy theorists speculate that the Bohemian Grove, the ideal grounds of the Bohemian Club, hosts secretive gatherings with right-wing influences and discussions about the New World Order. Annually, the Bohemian Club organizes a two-week-long gathering at their private forest in Sonoma County called Bohemian Grove. This notorious camp brings together members from around the world for activities like male bonding and debauchery, including rumored rituals like relieving themselves on the surrounding redwood trees as a display of man's power over nature. It's important to note that these claims might be rumors started by conspiracy theorists. Number 1. The Queen of England's Bedroom Buckingham Palace is a popular tourist attraction, welcoming visitors for tours, but the Queen's bedroom and private quarters have always been off-limits. In early July 1982, Queen Elizabeth II was in for a shock when she woke up to find an intruder sitting on her bed. The man, 31-year-old Michael Fagan, was dressed in a dirty t-shirt and jeans, holding a broken ashtray dripping with blood. Upon discovering the intruder, the Queen calmly asked the palace switchboard operator to call the police. However, there was no response. She also tried summoning the chambermaid, but again there was no reply. In the meantime, Queen Elizabeth engaged in conversation with Michael Fagan, who had initially planned to commit suicide in her bedroom but changed his mind. The situation was undoubtedly uncomfortable as they discussed family matters. Ten minutes after the Queen first encountered the intruder, a chambermaid finally entered the room and quickly fetched the footman. The footman apprehended Michael Fagan, and the police arrived twelve minutes after the initial call. Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher apologized for the security lapse, leading to strengthened security measures. Thankfully, nothing as extreme as this has occurred since that incident. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.